Hey kids, it's Mr. Stanley. This is Children's Church. I'm glad you're here with me this morning. We're going to start as we do every time we come to Children's Church, and that's with prayer requests and praises. So I'm going to give you about 10 to 12 seconds of silence, and during that time, if you know someone that's sick or sad or hurting, I want you to say their name. Or if you have something you want to pray for, I want you to say it out loud now. Or even if something really happy or really exciting has happened for you this week, I want you to tell God thank you for that now. And then we're all going to pray together and lift those prayer requests and praises to God. All right, I'm going to give you about 10 seconds. All right, good job, guys. I couldn't hear your praises and prayer requests, but God heard each and every one of them. And we're going to lift those up to God now in prayer to open Children's Church. Let's pray together. Dear Heavenly Father, God, we thank you for this day. God, I thank you for each and every kid, adult, whoever is watching this video right now. God, I pray for each and every one of them that you would be with them, lead them, guide them, let them know that you are with them and that you love them. We lift up all the prayer requests and praises that have been mentioned to you. We pray for the people who need you right now. We pray that you would be with them, God. And we want to tell you thank you for all the good and exciting and happy things that have happened in our lives this week, God. We love you, God, and we lift these up to you. Be with the people who need you, and thank you for the many blessings you have given us in our lives. We pray you be with us now and help us to learn a lot about you here in Children's Church today. All right, kids, after our opening prayer, we always move into the Lord's Prayer, all right? And I've told you before, but just in case we have some new people watching, the reason we pray this prayer every single week is because one day when Jesus was on earth, he had friends called the disciples. And his friends, the disciples, they one day asked Jesus, Jesus, teach us how to pray. Jesus taught them to pray using this prayer. So it's a special prayer. It's called the Lord's Prayer. We pray it every week. And we're going to pray that together now. So if you've heard it before, it starts Our Father. If you haven't, just listen to it. And if you come to Children's Church or if you go to church, you're going to pick up on this because we do it every single week. So let's pray now together. Again, it starts Our Father. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Good job, kids. All right, we now move into our Bible story of the week. And if you've been with us the last couple of weeks, you know that we're working our way through the Old Testament. We're, we're doing a series on heroes of the Old Testament. We started with Joseph, and we did him for a couple of weeks. And then last week, we started on Moses. So a quick recap for Moses. If you remember last week, we talked about how Moses as a baby was put in the river in a basket by his mother to save him. And he floats down the river and the princess of Egypt, Pharaoh's daughter, finds Moses in the basket and gets him out of the river. So he grows up as a prince of Egypt. He grows up in the king of Egypt, Pharaoh's palace. And he grows up. But when he gets older, he knows that he's one of God's people. And one day he's out and about and he sees one of God's people being beaten because he's not working hard enough building the pyramids and doing things for the people of Egypt. But he gets mad when he sees one of God's people getting beaten, and he kills the Egyptian who was beating the Israelite. And he knows he's in trouble. He knows that he's going to be in big trouble, so he runs away. He runs into the desert. He becomes a shepherd, and he starts a new life, and he's there for a number of years, and he lives a quiet and peaceful life. But one day, he's out watching his sheep, and he sees something weird. He sees a bush that's on fire, but the bush isn't burning. And so he goes to check it out because it's not burning up. He goes to check it out, and when he gets there, it's even weirder because the bush starts talking to him. God is talking to him through the bush. And God says, I've heard the cry of my people who are servants in Egypt, who are being mistreated and are made to work way too hard in Egypt. I've heard their cry. I'm going to rescue them and lead them out of Egypt. And Moses, I'm sending you to do that for me. 
all right? And so Moses makes up all sorts of excuses. He really doesn't want to do it. But every time God says, I will be with you. And finally Moses says, I will do this. I will go to Egypt and tell Pharaoh to let your people go. That's just a quick recap. If you'd like that full story, go back and watch last week's Children's Church because it's a really good story. But we're going to pick up right there. Moses and his brother Aaron, they go to Egypt. They go to Egypt and they go to Pharaoh and they say, God, they say, Pharaoh, God has heard the cry of his people. You are mistreating them, making them build pyramids and doing all the work in Egypt. You're making them work too hard. God has heard their cry and God has sent me to tell you to let his people go. And you know what Pharaoh said? Pharaoh said, no, I'm not going to let your God's people go. They do all of our work. I'm not letting them go. Why would I do that? Moses says, God is going to send signs and wonders to convince you that it is really him and he really wants you to let his people go. And the first sign, Moses picks up his staff. You were here last week. You remember this. God told him to do this. He picks up his staff and he throws it on the ground. His staff turns into a snake. And Pharaoh's pretty impressed, but Pharaoh calls his magicians that are with him in the palace. And he goes, can you guys do that? And they say, yeah, we can do that. And they throw staffs down. They turn into snakes. But here's the cool part. They could do it. Moses' snake eats their snakes so that it's only Moses' snake there. And Pharaoh is impressed. And Moses says, look, God allowed me to do this. Let God's people go. But Pharaoh still says no, and Moses says, okay, God's going to send signs and wonders, and you probably heard of them called plagues on Egypt, until you agree to let his people go. And that's what happens, and there's ten plagues that he sends on Egypt. And we're not going to go over them all today, but just to name a couple of them, there's a couple of days where it's totally dark in Egypt. There's a day where there's gnats that come over all the people of Egypt. There's a day or a week where frogs show up all over Egypt. Where locusts, which are grasshoppers that eat everything, come on Egypt. And after each of these plagues, again, there's ten of them, Moses goes to Pharaoh after each one and says, God says, let my people go. And Pharaoh keeps saying no. But finally... After ten plagues, after the people of Egypt are miserable, they're telling Pharaoh, just let them go. We can't take this anymore. We've had frogs and gnats and darkness. It's terrible. Let them go. Finally, Pharaoh says, get out. Moses, take your people. Take God's people and go. And so Moses leads the people of Israel, leads God's people out of Egypt. And I say Moses led them out, but it was actually God who led them out. God spoke to Moses and said, look, I'm going to lead you out of Egypt. At night, you're going to see a giant ball of fire in the sky. And I want you to follow that ball of fire. And during the day, you're going to see this big cloud in the sky. I want you to follow it. I'm in the cloud. I'm in the fire. I'm going to lead my people out. And so they do that. They follow this ball of fire. They follow this cloud. And they leave Egypt. And it leads them to the edge of the Red Sea. If you've ever heard that, the Red Sea. It leads them there. It's basically a giant body of water. It's not an ocean, but for the people of Israel, the Israelites, it would have looked like an ocean. They couldn't see across to the other side. It was water as far as they could see. And when they get there, that ball of fire and that cloud, it stops. And so they wait by the Red Sea to see where God is going to lead them. And while they're waiting there, way back in Egypt, Pharaoh changes his mind. Pharaoh says, you know what? I've made a mistake. The Israelites were the ones who were building the pyramids. They were doing all the work that we Egyptians didn't want to do. Now we've got to do it. He goes, uh-uh, I'm going to get them. I've changed my mind. I told them they could go. I'm going to go get them and bring them back to Egypt. And he gathers his entire army, his horses, his chariots, all of his soldiers, and he says, we're going to get the Israelites and bring them back. And they take off. And so you've got the Israelites. They're just kind of hanging out by the Red Sea, waiting on God to tell them where to go. And all of a sudden, they hear noises. I'm betting the ground kind of shook a little bit. And they look back from the way they came, and they see the entire Egyptian army running and racing and riding horses towards them. And they know that they're in trouble. 
all right? And the Israelites, the Bible says they lost their minds. They started panicking. They started yelling at Moses and yelling at God. And they said, Moses, why would you lead us into the desert? Why would you lead us out of Egypt only to die in the desert? Why would God do that to us? We're now going to die in the desert, at least in Egypt. We had work and we had food. Now we're just going to, they panic, guys. They lose their minds. But the Bible says that Moses is calm. Moses trusts in God. Moses knows that God has said, I'm going to lead my people out of Egypt. So he prays. And God tells him to do something. It sounds kind of strange. God says, take your staff, same staff that turned into the snake. He says, take your staff, raise it in the air, and plunge it down on the ground. And Moses does what God asks him to do. He raises his staff, he hits the ground with it, and this is cool. It's one of the coolest things I imagine you could have seen in Bible times, especially the Old Testament. When he plunges that staff into the ground, the Bible says the waters of the Red Sea part. So you've got a giant wall of water here, and a giant wall of water here, and dry land all the way across the Red Sea. And Moses says, go. And the Israelites start walking across the Red Sea on dry land. All right, and so they walk across, they walk across, they walk across. They're almost to the other side, and the Egyptian army gets to where they were standing. They can see the Israelites walking across the Red Sea on dry land, and Pharaoh has a decision to make. Does he go after them, or does he stop? And he says, well, if they can do it, we can do it. And he says, go. And the Egyptian army starts following the Israelites across the dry land in the Red Sea. And all the Israelites get safely to the other side, and God tells Moses, pick up the staff again and plunge it in the ground. And Moses does that, and the waters, these walls of water, crash back in and sweep the entire Egyptian army away. And the Israelites are finally free. They're free from Egypt. And that's the end of the story. It's one of these wild stories. They've made movies about it. You might have seen the Prince of Egypt. And it's cool to see that giant wall. But they're finally free. God has done what he promised. He's led his people out of Egypt. All right. Cool story. All right. I love this story. Here's what I want you to think about today, kids. All right. So when the Egyptian army is bearing down on the Israelites, I told you, what did the people do? What did all the Israelites do? They panicked. They lost their minds. They were scared. They didn't know what to do. They panicked. They started blaming Moses. They started blaming God. But what did Moses do? Moses remained calm. He trusted God, and he prayed to God to see what God wanted him to do. All right? And so, guys, I know that there are times in your life, you may be going through one now, where really sad things happen to you. Really scary things happen to you. Things happen that make you panic, that make you freak out. And I want to encourage you today to be like Moses. To be like Moses. When those times come, I want to encourage you to take a minute, to relax, to pray to God, to ask God to help you in that moment. To remind yourself through praying that God is with you. Even though life is scary, even though life is sad, even though life is hard, God is with you. God will never leave you. God will always love you. And God promises to walk with us and help us during those hard times. So guys, if you're going through a hard time right now, a scary time, a sad time, I want to encourage you to spend some time with God and to trust in God. And if you're not going through one now, I encourage you to do that the next time that happens to you. All right, guys, I hope that you have enjoyed this story of Moses. Again, if you didn't see the first half, go back and watch last week's, and I hope you'll join us next week when we continue our ser series, Heroes of the Bible, with our next character. All right, guys, I'm going to close us out in prayer. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, God, we thank you for this day. We thank you for watching over us today, God. We thank you for the story of Moses and what Moses can teach us. Moses teaches us that when times are scary, when life is hard, God, instead of panicking, we can trust in you. We can spend time with you, and we know that you are with us, that you'll never leave us, that you'll always love us, and that you promise to walk with us through 
the hard times. I pray for each and every kid that's watching. I pray that they would have a great week this week and that you would walk with them through this week and help them in all that they do. It's in your holy and precious name we pray. Amen. All right, kids, that's all for Children's Church today. Again, join us next week, and we'll talk about our next hero of the Bible. Bye. Have a great week.